most of the the filtrate comes from glomerulus most of the solute whatever sodium potassium bicarbonate phosphate calcium most of them reabsorbed in proximal tubule that's why like uh, fanconi syndrome it's a disease of proximal tubule where proximal tubule cannot reabsorb the solute so most of the solute passes through urine it's a very dangerous condition so proximal tubule <coughs> see amino glucose amino acid phosphate calcium every almost everything uh, reabsorbed in proximal tubule which are not reabsorbed here is the question which are not reabsorbed in proximal tubule that is one thing creatinine some drugs they are not absorbed rather secreted in proximal tubule so right underline this creatinine urate some drugs and they are not reabsorbed and another question is how many you know sodium is reabsorbed all over the tubule in different percentage uh, of obviously most of the sodium reabsorbed in proximal tubule then what is the percentage 90 percent sorry 90 percent reabsorbed in bicarbonate 50 percent sodium is reabsorbed in proximal tubule and what about the loop of Henle? Loop of Henle that, that is 40 percent sodium is reabsorbed in loop of Henle. and here what is the transporter here sodium potassium to chloride co-transporter is present in thick limb of ascending limb of loop of Henle. why i am reading this what is the importance of this because <coughs> In case of Barter syndrome, the, the mutation is uh, present in this co-transporter. That is mutation is here. That is why it is not working effectively. All sodium, potassium chloride all excrete through urine. That is occurs in Barter syndrome. That is why you have to remember this. The loop of Henle presents sodium, potassium to chloride co-transporter. Co-transporter that all enters into cell. And another important point is when you, you what type of diuretics work here that is loop diuretics frusimide frusimide work in this part of renal tubule there are two informations here so co-trans uh, 40 percent sodium is absorbed here there is a co-transporter sodium potassium to chloride diuretics loop diuretics work on this side and mutation of this co-transporter give rise to barter syndrome <clears throat> then comes to uh, next distal tubule you know that 50 and 40 almost 90 percent sodium are reabsorbed so how many parts are remaining here five percent sodium is also reabsorbed in distal tubule but here is not reabsorption is not main function of this part is here is main function is acidification because hydrogen ion secretes here what is the uh, transporter here sodium chloride co-transporter that is sodium potassium to chloride co-transporter and here is sodium chloride co-transporter and another thiazide diuretics work here so information regarding distal tubule one is only five percent sodium is reabsorbed here there is sodium chloride co-transporter present and thiazide diuretics work on this side <coughs> work on this transporter and in case of gentleman syndrome there is mutation of this co-transporter <coughs> okay and oh no, main function is uh, acidification acid secretion okay so main function of distal tubule is the acidification of urine <coughs> last is collecting duct only two percent sodium is absorbed here here is there are two two receptor important receptor that is aldosterone receptor which uh, increase sodium reabsorption and excrete potassium so aldosterone receptor second one is um, aquaporin the water channel hmm? vasopressin acts here so importance of collecting duct is two hormone acts here because of these two receptor one is aldosterone receptor two is vasopressin receptor the name of this here is aquaporin what is water channel hmm? uh, antidiuretic hormone works here and it increase water reabsorption <coughs> so important and what diuretics work here you say loop diuretics work on loop of henle 
you say thiazide diuretics work on distal convoluted tubule and what type of diuretics work here collecting duct well uh, actually spironolactone is working here and another diuretics i didn't mention proximal tubule that is osmotic diuretics okay mannitol hmm? acetazolamide work on this part of tubule so when you read diuretics osmotic diuretics work on proximal tubule tube diuretics work on loop of henle thiazide diuretics work on distal tubule and spironolactone amyloride acts on collecting duct you know spironolactone acts on aldosterone receptor <coughs> so these are the functions of renal tubule Pro function of proximal tubule reabsorption main function is reabsorption almost all solute apart from creatinine uric urate etc uh, loop of henle its main thing is maintenance of um, uh, equilibrium concentration equilibrium and as well as uh, reabsorption of sodium <coughs> and distal part reabsorption as well as acidification of urine collecting the main function is hormonal function uh, aldosterone and uh, water reabsorption by antidiuretic hormone these are the function of different parts of kidney what is the function of glomerulus what are the functions of renal tubules i think uh, you got it okay and what is the renin angiotensin system because in function uh, renin, in physiology renin angiotensin aldosterone system is very important because you say you say aldosterone receptor in collecting ducts then how it works so whenever renal blood flow is reduced it secretes renin from juxta glomerular apparatus this renin changes as angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 and this angiotensin 1 goes to lungs and converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin convertase enzyme this angiotensin 2 uh, acts there are two functions mainly angiotensin 2 uh, one is vasoconstriction so raise blood pressure another one is stimulates aldosterone secretion and it that aldosterone causes salt water retention and excretion of potassium so the, these two functions by these two function uh, it maintains blood pressure as well as uh, concentration plasma concentration in our body <coughs> and uh, this is renal and uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system and you already mentioned the kidney secrets erythropoietin which stimulates uh, rbc production from bone marrow vitamin d you also mentioned that vitamin d um, uh, produce 125 dihydroxy colecalciferol by the help of one alpha hydroxylase enzyme uh, and which is the active form of vitamin D. What is the function of 125D? Bone mineralization. Bone mineralization. Yes, it's a one off function, but we know that 125D and parathyroid hormone both key increase serum calcium level and calcitonin decrease serum calcium level. Calcium homeostasis maintained by these three things, isn't it? Vitamin D, parathyroid hormone, calcitonin. And how 125D increase uh, calcium level? It increase intestinal absorption of calcium and phosphate. Okay. And another one is it renal increase renal reabsorption of uh, calcium. <coughs> and another action, action site is skeletal actually what you mentioned. It increase osteoblastic activity. Okay, there are three sides of action of uh, vitamin D. Direct action is intestinal absorption, renal is indirect method actually um, and uh, on skeleton it increases osteoblastic activity. And parathyroid hormone, parathyroid hormone has no act, uh, direct act on intestine, it mainly increase renal reabsorption of calcium. It increase 125 uh, D not yeah, it increase actually one alpha hydroxylase activity in that way it increase 125d increase intestinal absorption 
and another one is is increase osteoclastic activity it resolves bone resorption <coughs> in this way both of them increase serum calcium level okay 